Alvin, Martrade has just released the country's 2019 trade performance and China is our biggest trading partner, as we may know or may have, or may have known, for 11 consecutive years now with over 17% of our total trade. So first off, before we go deeper, I would like to ask you, how big will the impact of the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, be felt on the Chinese economy? Um, I think, I think uh, if... Uh, you know, a lot of economists have been trying to uh, draw a lot of parallels to uh, the last pandemic which uh, affected China or Hong Kong was uh, the SARS period in 2003-2004. Um, you know, they, they, uh, there were various estimates because these numbers are very large, um, you know, between 0.8 to 1% of um, GDP. Uh, but we have to remember in 2003-2004, um, uh, that was more than 15 years ago, uh, China was a very different place. Uh, so really, if you look at, um, uh, you know, it's unfolding as we, as we speak. Uh, and if you look at, look at the impact, uh, it's very difficult to ascertain exactly how much in GDP. Uh, but what we know for sure, there will be definitely a slowdown um, um, in the economy. Um, as you know, a lot of uh, offices have shut down. They have extended uh, the Lunar New Year. Uh, and a lot of offices have closed, factories have closed, so this will definitely impact the output, especially for the export market. Right. I like your point that we shouldn't probably draw parallels between now the novel coronavirus and also the SARS, uh, SARS outbreak in 2003 because we can argue um, it in a different light because a lot of people are comparing this. A lot of economists are uh, comparing the, uh, these two you know, epidemics. Um, and in and, and, and some measures, the novel coronavirus now has already exceeded SARS in terms of the mortality percentage and all those things. But um, is, it, is it not worse this time? Because back in 2003, the global economy was not as volatile as uh, 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 what the, today's economy is. Even before this wild card of the novel coronavirus breaking out, in 2019, we had a trade war, we had very volatile growth, we had very uncertain you know, economic policies by the big countries, by the US, by, by some other countries as well. So. You can't compare, but can you argue that it's probably worse this time? Because the environment was already worse before the novel coronavirus even hit uh, the global economy. Yeah, I think, I think uh, we can't compare because China is a lot more integral in terms of the world economy today and its contributions. Um, uh, for example, if you look at semiconductor and electronics, there is a huge uh, shift. I mean, from 15 years to where we are today, uh, they are a very integral part uh, of the supply chain, global supply chain. Uh, so the impact is definitely, uh, I believe, is going to be a lot bigger than the SARS virus, right? Uh, if you think of uh, the largest pandemic in the world, which was uh, the Spanish flu that happened in 1918 and 1919, you know, uh, that also coincided with World War One, and up to today, you know, after uh, 100 years, uh, they're still debating how much the world economy has lost. So really, uh, to put a number to it, it, at best, it's really just an estimate. Um, but uh, it, China has it, it, it's a completely different economy than what it was 15 years ago. Right. So coming back to what we mentioned earlier, China is, of course, the biggest trading partner, our biggest trading partner. Um, they account for more than 17% of the total trade for Malaysia. Uh, and, and we export some 14.2% of our exports go to China. And we import as well a lot from China. We import over 20% of our total imports from China, the second biggest economy in the world. So seeing as they are our biggest trading partner, now that they are, for lack of a better word, suffering, the economy is suffering because of the novel coronavirus there in China, will there be any spillover effects on the Malaysian economy? Um, I think if you look at the statistics that today, um, China accounts for 80 to 90 percent of the world country. They are either the largest trading partner or the second largest trading partner. Uh, so not only will we feel the effect in Malaysia, uh, we will feel the effects globally, right? Uh, uh, if you look at uh, where we are positioned in Malaysia specifically, um, you know, we actually import a lot more from China than we um, export to them. Uh, so actually, we are net importers. Um, and yes, there will definitely be a, a spillover effects in Malaysia. I mean, I mean, the very obvious ones, if you look at uh, purely by tourism, they, they form the largest number uh, in Malaysia uh, last five, eight, ten years, right? Uh, so when you talk about specific industries that will directly be impacted by um, by by this virus, it will be uh, tourism, it will be airlines, hospitality, um, 
insurance, um, and of course, you go lower down will be manufacturing, which is uh, the import and the export parts, right? Uh, the virus, unfortunately, doesn't target specific industries per se. Uh, um, so therefore, it has actually far overreaching um, uh, uh, consequences for the world's economy because the knock-on effect is going to be fairly big. How about the sentiment? Because I know you're very familiar. You, you follow a lot, um, uh, the markets um, very closely. Of course, you're very familiar with investor sentiments towards different parts of the world, including here in Malaysia. What can you say about the international or foreign investor sentiment towards how the Malaysian government is handling this, this crisis? I think, uh, I think if we talk about uh, the source of where the virus comes from, um, which was Wuhan, I think it's, it's quite well known. I think recently we've been reading uh, when WHO declared a global emergency, a health emergency, uh, that was five days ago, they did praise China for um, uh, very swiftly trying to contain the virus because not only did they shut down Wuhan, they also tried to shut, uh, they also surrounded uh, uh, travel bans uh, around Hubei as well. Uh, uh, so if you look at the cases, you know, the air travel is so prevalent in today's uh, society. Um, uh, if you look at the cases, you know, we have far exceeded uh, the number of uh, infected cases uh, to SARS. I think two to one, right, uh, in a much shorter period. Uh, so really, I think uh, uh, we need to focus more on the source of where, where, where that is. Um, and I think all governments around the world... Um, you know, uh, who are members of the WHO, uh, you know, aggressively to try and do their part to contain this because it doesn't just affect China, it affects everybody. Right. Several entities now, including companies, are beginning to, you know, um, uh, revise their growth numbers uh, downwards. Um, it's probably, some would argue it's probably too early to tell. That's probably true. But what can, I, what can you say about the economic impact of the coronavirus here in Malaysia? How will the on-ground impact be felt by ordinary Malaysians over the rest of this year in terms of the economy? No, I think uh, it, uh, maybe to answer the previous question, I, I realize I forgot. Um, when we talk about investor sentiment, um, if, if we look at this, even before the outbreak of the, corona, uh, the coronavirus, um, actually our net exports have been down 5.5% last quarter. Mm. Um, that's why if, if you look at uh, uh, what our central bank has done was actually to cut uh, interest rates. Uh, so what what do I have you know what do I think I have in store for uh, for Malaysia in particular? Now if you look at uh, Malaysia in itself, uh, we are fairly unique. Um, if you look at uh, uh, our government spending, you know we're trying to uh, narrow the deficit. Uh, but what the, the because of this outbreak, what we've seen immediately in the last uh, 30 days uh, is actually a drop in crude oil prices. Now, a drop in crude oil prices uh, will ultimately affect our national uh, oil company. And in effect, uh, because at, at least 20% or, uh, of government revenue actually comes from um, our national oil company, uh, uh, we believe that their deficit would actually widen or they would have to revise their budget again. Uh, second thing is, uh, without doing that, what they might or what the central banks might do um, is probably at least uh, probably cut interest rates one more time uh, this year, or at, 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 at the worst case scenario, probably two more times. All right, thank you so much, uh, Alvin. Alvin Wong, Ketua Pegawai Executive Equity Striker. Dan keterhubungan perdagangan di peringkat global kini bermakna impak penularan novel coronavirus bukan hanya memberi kesan kepada ekonomi dan negara, tetapi juga syarikat di serata dunia.